On November the 2nd, 2000, the first crew of astronauts arrived at the International Space Station. Almost 25 years have passed and the ISS still remains one of the most outstanding projects created by humanity. During all this time, 280 astronauts from 23 countries have visited the station. This place has become a floating laboratory for space research where people from all over the world come together to explore our universe. The station remains a source of inspiration for writers and movie directors. This is not only one of the most important parts of the scientific field of humankind, but also an important attribute of pop culture. The station makes one circle around Earth every 90 minutes, and very soon, one of its next circles will become the last one. NASA is going to destroy the ISS. Space and science fiction fans may feel sad at this moment, but there are good reasons for such a difficult decision. The ISS, like any physical object, is not eternal especially in the conditions of outer space. Yes, there's no oxygen, atmosphere, oxidation of materials and air pressure, but the ISS is moving at an altitude of about 260 miles above the Earth's surface at a speed of 17,900 miles per hour, which is almost 20 times faster than the speed of sound. Also, the space around the planet is filled with debris consisting of broken satellites. And don't forget about stardust and tiny pieces of meteorites. What if something crashes into the station and blows it to pieces? Yeah, NASA is tracking the largest pieces of debris, but there are more and more of them every year. Under such conditions, the station can't serve us forever. The parts are wearing out and the station fasteners are becoming weaker and require frequent repairs. The station was supposed to only last 15 years, but it will eventually last twice as long. In 2030, astronauts will leave the ISS, and then it will be destroyed. But how can this be done, given the size of this object? It weighs 430 tons and is the size of a football field. It is the largest object after the moon that flies around our planet. People made 42 launches into space to construct this gigantic structure. Given its size and close location to Earth, destroying the station is a big risk. Just imagine it disintegrating into hundreds and thousands of fragments and falling to the surface of our planet. Yes, some of these chunks will burn up in the atmosphere, others will fall into the water, but some large parts can fall on cities. It will be a devastating meteor shower. This option is too dangerous, but this is exactly what NASA is about to do. The disposal of the station will probably be a more complex operation than its creation. Of course, scientists have considered other options besides the destruction. For example, we could return all the astronauts to Earth and then send the station to a higher orbit so that it would fly there forever. However, such an operation would be too expensive. In addition, changing the orbit might not save the station from collapsing. We definitely don't need a huge piece of metal that could fall apart at any moment over our heads. That's why destroying the station is the only option. To destroy the station, scientists plan to send it to a lower Earth orbit, then carry it through the atmosphere, where some parts of the station will burn, and after that, submerge the station in a remote part of the ocean, where ships don't sail and fish don't swim. By the way, this place is called Point Nemo, and it's located in the South Pacific Ocean. This is the farthest point from land, for many years, people have been dumping space debris and failed satellites there. It's considered one of the most lifeless and loneliest places on Earth. NASA plans to drop the ISS there, but this requires very precise calculations and control. The operation can't be fulfilled without a special space tug, and this unique machine will be invented by Elon Musk's SpaceX company. Musk signed an $845 million contract with NASA. According to it, the station should be safely destroyed by 2031. And that's how this cinematic operation is going to happen. The device that will lower the ISS to Earth will be built according to the design of the SpaceX Dragon ship capsule. Scientists plan to calculate the details of the station's flight trajectory, all angles of incidence, and the speed of movement. No mistake can be made, as any miscalculation will lead to disaster. 
Our planet is a giant object with a powerful gravitational force that attracts other objects to itself. The ISS uses thrusters to resist this attraction and stay at the same height. So, first of all, the station will need to reduce its resistance. If necessary, it can use the engines to adjust the route. From an altitude of 260 miles, the station will descend into an orbit of 205 miles above Earth. After that, SpaceX will launch its space tug. All this will happen about a year before the scheduled date of destruction. During this time, the astronauts will fold up scientific equipment, say goodbye to the station, and return home. This sad moment will be recorded on camera and posted on the internet. After that, the whole planet will watch the dramatic finale of the ISS. The space tug will dock with the station and transport it to the lowest point of the orbit, approximately 90 miles above the surface. There, the station will experience huge air resistance. It will become increasingly difficult to control the fall. The tug must be equipped with powerful rocket engines to correct the flight. Scientists will control the shuttle, calculating the trajectory of the fall. Then, SpaceX's device will begin to push the station down. The giant space object will pass through the thickest and most dangerous layers of the atmosphere. It will burn down the station, which will be falling apart by that time. This will be a mesmerizing fire show. Some parts will burn up in the air, others will pass through the barrier. At high speed, incandescent parts will collide with the surface of the Pacific Ocean. Millions of people will be watching the last flight of the space legend on the screens of their gadgets and TVs. The water will be getting closer, and boom! Pieces of those station will crash into the water with a deafening noise. Many smaller fragments will fall nearby. The entire station will cool down quickly and sink to the ocean floor. Mission completed. But the history of the station won't be over. Point Nemo is 2,700 miles away from the nearest land in any direction. But the best way to get to it is from Easter Island, Chile. What if rich people from all over the world flew to Chile to then travel to Point Nemo? Just imagine covering thousands of miles just to get to the ISS crash site. People will descend in bathyscaphs to the ocean floor and take out the wreckage of the station. Someone might start selling them. Someone will keep them at home as part of a collection. Perhaps NASA will retrieve some modules of the station to put them in a museum. But what will happen once scientists finally get rid of the ISS? The space laboratory is used for research in outer space. After its destruction, research will continue, but on a grander scale. Humanity has to explore Mars, remember? For such an important mission, it's necessary to prepare astronauts in conditions close to those on the Red Planet. The Moon is the perfect place. NASA is conducting the Artemis mission. We'll explore the lunar surface and we will go on a long journey to Mars from there. At the end of 2022, NASA launched a probe that flew beyond the Moon. The next flight will be launched with people on board. The third flight will be the first human outing on the Moon since 1972. Gradually, step by step, the agency plans to land several astronauts and space station modules on the surface of the Moon. They will build large research bases where they will prepare for the first ever human flight to Mars. By the way, would you agree to go on a dangerous journey to the Red Planet? Write your answers in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.